Hi, I'm Chuck Sloan, and I'm joined here with Don Osborne Adams, and we're excited to be the ombuds for Ash's upcoming conference in Puerto Rico. Chuck and I have both been ombuds for many years, and rather than restate our bios, which you can find on the conference website, we thought it would be more compelling to answer a few questions that we expect attendees might have. What do you got, Don? Okay, question number one. I'm asked this all the time, even by people who are friends and family and really should know better. What is an ombud? <laughs> I get asked that question all the time too. All right, I will give the, the best short answer I can think of, which is ombuds is a, a Swedish word. Uh, it was established, uh, the role was established by the Swedes in the early 1800s. Nowadays, there are ombuds offices in the private sector, in government, in NGOs, and of course, at many of our universities. Ombuds are intended to be neutral, confidential resources. We help people navigate challenging situations and we support organizations in addressing systemic issues. As you might imagine, I could go on and on and I'm sure Don could as well about what an ombuds is, but I think that's kind of a short summary definition. All right, Don, your turn. So a question that often pops up is, how can an ombuds be independent or impartial when they're ultimately paid for by the university or by the organization rather? That's a great question. Language and specifically a shared understanding of language is so important. The short answer to the question is that a thoughtfully designed ombuds program like the ASH conference program has already embedded these principles of independence and impartiality into the design and structure of the program itself. And I'm gonna tell you what I mean by that. An organizational ombud should be structurally independent from the organization they serve, and when the program's been appropriately designed and supported, the ombuds program operates autonomously. So best practice means that an ombuds has sole discretion over how or whether they engage with any issue that comes to their attention, and the ombuds is accountable, but only administratively, to the highest point of the organization. So this discretion and the distance supports ombuds in not having a stake in anything that comes in front of them, not being aligned with individuals or aligned with the association, and really as a matter of mandate and ethics, taking every perspective in a situation into consideration. So I'd summarize everything I just said by saying that an ombuds is positioned, but they're also paid to be independent and impartial. Does that make sense? Makes sense to me. All right, now it's my turn to do the asking. So this is a good one. What types of issues do people bring in to an ombuds? That's a good question. Um, well, you know, over the course of our careers, we've both worked with thousands of people. Um, and while each of those situations uh, are somewhat different, I, I think some of the common themes or types of issues that we see, uh, we often see people when there's a breakdown in a professional relationship. And that can run the gamut from a misunderstanding to more egregious behavior. Uh, we see issues of safety, where a person is you know, concerned about their career or their well-being. Uh, we see people, uh, oftentimes leaders, who are confused or feel stuck in situations and don't know how to move forward effectively. Uh, and then we also do systemic work um, with organizations when an issue emerges that is negatively impacting people within that community. We try to help provide context and to be a thought partner to leadership. Um, so while every situation is different, and oftentimes we see you know, kind of a whole bunch of different things happening in the same situation. The, the big takeaway is that we're here as conference ombuds to support you and support the ASH community in any professional or kind of personally and professionally overlap situation that pops up. We're a big open door um, and accessible to you. So it sounds like any person, any issue of any size, any level. Yep. yep. It's a lot shorter than how I said it, but yeah, that's exactly right. Uh, all right, so another question uh, specific to our work at the conference. What is the difference between our day to day work as university ombuds and our role as conference ombuds? So the similarities are actually greater than the differences are. And what I mean by that is the heart of ombuds work. And I think the reason both of us um, have been at this work so long is that we meet people where they are and we try to bring humanity and dignity into any situation. And that doesn't change with industry or venue. The challenge for us, though, with the conference is going to be time. We'll have this time limited window with the association members we're serving, and that means that we're going to have to bring all of our expertise and experience to bear so to really quickly work towards practical and actionable and valuable um, 
options for the consultations with those who come to meet with us. All right, so this is the last question, Chuck. If people come to see us or refer their colleagues to us, what can they expect in a meeting with an ombud? Hmm. Um, well, I, I think you and I would likely lay out what they can expect at the beginning of every meeting. So I, I can do that here um, just to give a sense for folks before they actually come to sit with us. Uh, I think an ombuds process often breaks down to, into three steps. So I'll lay those out. So first step is when folks sit down with us, I think they'll find that we are very curious listeners. We're interested in hearing the full extent and context of the situation. You know, really, the first thing is, what's the story? Let's make sure that we're understanding that. Second piece is once we understand what's occurred and the impact, then we can shift to what the person would like to see happen moving forward. What are their goals? And once we've established the goals and those are clear, then we can talk about the third part, uh, serving as thought partners, developing options, uh, thinking about resources and tangible next steps, kind of the game plan. So story, goals, game plan. And you know, we have the benefit of having worked alongside folks in thousands of situations. Um, but I, I think it's helpful to remember uh, that our role isn't to provide advice or have all the answers. Um, it is to empower the person that we're sitting with uh, to find their own path forward, a path forward that, that feels comfortable, feels doable, and is right for them and for their career. So that's what folks can expect if they come to meet with us or refer someone over to us. Great. So we'll see you all next week in San Juan, whether we see you in person or virtually. And we are looking forward to launching this ASH Ombuds program. And we'd say, come see us. Even if you don't have an issue, we'd love if you stop by and say hello. And we will be ready to serve the ASH membership next week. See you in Puerto Rico.